Good evening and welcome to MTV's news update, March 11, 2020 edition. I'm Sandy Ramutar and for the top stories we're tracking this evening. High Court nullifies elections declaration in Region 4, orders returning officer to restart verification using statements of poll. Woman dies at GPHC suspected of having the coronavirus, COVID-19. Karakam leaders arrive in Ghana over a disputed elections process. And in sport, Ghana loses chance to compete in Tokyo Olympics after cancellation of American Olympic qualifier. More coming up after the break. Stay with us. Let FiberTech help you to renovate, refresh and redecorate your kitchen. Spice up your kitchen with decorative colors, finishes and accessories. Choose from an array of designs and beautiful granite colors that are blended to suit your choice. FiberTech Lifetime Kitchen is durable, thermites free and water resistant. Enjoy one year factory warranty along with our after sale service. So come on in and let us help you choose wisely. now using Softex toilet tissue. Available in leading supermarkets countrywide, Softex is always silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp and babies love it. Softex comes available in single rolls, economy pack, six pack, and one dozen packages. Just perfect for any budget. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, telephone 622-4197. Hey, you have a growing flesh there, and there too, and there is another one. Those ugly and annoying growing flesh, like a plague, ignoring them, and before you know, you have them everywhere. SlimJet presenting Coliomac, the most effective growing flesh and wall remover. Painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way. Get soft, smooth, growing flesh-free skin, guarantee. Just apply Colomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick and painless. Stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Colomac. Only at the Slim Jet, City Mall, second floor. Start feeling good again with Probiotic XL. Probiotic XL contains a proprietary formula of 10 of the most important probiotics that have been researched and developed to help your body get rid of what's bad for it and help promote what makes you feel good. If leading a healthy life and enjoying every day is something you want to do, then Probiotic XL is for you. Welcome back. Now for the news in detail. The High Court today ordered the returning officer of Region 4 to restart the verification of the election's results by 11 hours tomorrow. She also notified the declaration made by the RO. Chief Justice Roxanne George Welsh has ordered the tabulation of Region 4 elections results by the returning officer Clement Mingo to be completed and lawfully declared. The injunction was sought by the People's Progressive Party Civic. The Chief Justice ruled that the returning officer of Region 4 breached the electoral law when he declared unverified results for that district. People have to understand that there is a democracy at work and when political parties lose an election, they have to accept the results. In 2015, the PPP were told that they lost the elections and they accepted the results. 
No one broke up the process. And that is what you have here. Hopefully now, one can only trust the RO will carry out his uh, instructions um, and his duties and obligation in accordance with law. Let us hope that the statements of poll have not been tampered with. The Chief Justice ordered that the returning officer commence compliance with Section 84 of the Representation of the People Act no later than 11 hours on Thursday. This act says the votes cast on the polling places in each district shall be counted by the returning officer of that district in accordance with the provisions of this part. She said it is for the returning officer to decide whether he intends to restart or continue the process. 421 of 879 statements of polls were tabulated. The High Court deemed the declaration made by the RO null, void and of no effect. The Chief Justice also blocked Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield from declaring the March 2, 2020 regional and general elections until the process is fully completed. British Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab is the latest international figure to raise concern about the stalled March to 2020 regional and general elections in Guyana. British Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab has issued a call to President David Granger to preserve the principles of free, fair and credible elections. The Foreign Secretary in a statement urged Mr Granger to ensure proper procedures are followed before embarking on a transition into government. He said electoral fraud and premature declarations of victory prior to the completion of the credible process will pose a grave threat to the democratic principles of Guyana. The British Foreign Secretary said the United Kingdom stands ready to offer assistance to ensure credible election results is produced. Guyana's stall election process continues to draw attention from the international observer groups, Western missions and the international community. The Transparency Institute Ghana Incorporated is calling on the AP and UFC coalition to clear itself of the allegation that it was involved in some form of skullduggery to rig the elections. The Transparency Institute of Guyana Incorporated said President David Granger, though he announced he never intervened in the functions of GCOM in relation to the elections, he has not cleared his party and its members of such interventions. As such, the TIGI believes it is important that the elections is seen as credible. The Institute in this respect is calling on the Partnership for National Unity Alliance for Change to indicate its position on the credibility of the system used by GCOM in the tabulation process for Region 4. The organization is of the firm view all Guyanese deserve and should demand nothing less than transparent verification of the results of the 2020 elections. The Transparency Institute of Guyana Incorporated believes that the longer a credible and correct procedure is delayed, the greater the possibility of ballot boxes at GCOM becoming compromised, as they are no longer in sight of local and international observers. The Institute believes that the Guyana Elections Commission is mandated to verify the results of Region 4 before the official announcement. The Transparency Institute of Guyana Incorporated, like the rest of the observer missions, recognizes should a president be sworn in prior to the completion of the verification process, that president and his entire regime will remain questionable and GCOM would have shredded its credibility and that of its offices. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashana Gomes, Cornelius. Meanwhile, CARICOM Chairman Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley and the Prime Ministers of Dominica, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines in Trinidad and Tobago have all arrived in Guyana. They are on a two-day visit for engagements with various election stakeholders. This follows the issues with the tabulation process for Region 4 in the general and regional elections. Still ahead, WHO declares COVID-19 a pandemic and PPP calls on police force and ERC to investigate alleged racial inciting statement of Prime Minister Nagamutu. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals.
Welcome to Rossignol's Butchery. Here you'll find the freshest, most tender and flavorful meats, including steaks, burgers, sausages, minced meat, fish, and more, plus packaged meats and cheeses. All this in a highly hygienic atmosphere. In our store, there is a wide variety of canned goods, sauces, and marinades. Our friendly staff will cater to all your needs. Rossignol Butchery, we meet your needs. 7374 Church Street, Georgetown. Telephone 223-0004. Everything is connected. Our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Be on windows and doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property or just upgrading your home they got you covered Beeson windows and doors providing unmatched quality windows for your home office and commercial building located at 1228 Eccles industrial site for more information call 662-4197 or 226-1292 The Ministry of Public Health in an emergency press conference confirmed there is a suspected COVID-19 case at a Georgian public hospital. Tests are being done and results will be made available to the public. The woman reported to the Georgetown Public Hospital and had flu-like symptoms. She succumbed around eight hours this morning and samples were taken from her to test for the Wuhan-originated coronavirus, COVID-19. The accident and emergency department of the Georgetown Public Hospital currently has restrictive access and staff was instructed to disinfect the area. Uh, I think it's important and I would like to brief you on the situation at the Georgetown Hospital where a 52-year-old female who is diabetic and hypertensive who traveled from the United States of America, specifically Queens, New York, and seemed to have associated flu-like symptoms. Investigation was done and interrogation, and the family members who were there with the person could not confirm any contact that she may have had with anyone with COVID-19. But, of course, suspicion because you travel on a plane can exist. Uh, samples were taken from her nasopharyngeal area and they were sent to the National Reference Lab. We will be in possession of those results sometime later in the afternoon. Dr. Shamyo Prasad assured the media that the public would be informed if there is any confirmed case of the virus in Guyana. Tests are being done at the National Reference Lab to determine whether or not the deceased was infected with COVID-19. We will treat this as, as serious as it is and until you know we have the final results from the laboratory test which is being currently done, um, we, will, we should not, and I, I say that, we should not just make assumptions and try to, you know, spread rumors as it were as regards to this disease. I would like to caution too that, you know, we should ex es uh, establish the same measure of control regardless of who we are dealing with. There are some other diseases out there that may be not as um, high profile as corona, but may have similar kinds of consequences. Luan Williams reporting for MTV News Update. For the first time, the World Health Organization called the disease caused by the novel coronavirus COVID-19 a pandemic. WHO defies a pandemic as a worldwide spread of a new disease for which most people do not have immunity. 
We tell you now that the People's Progressive Party Civic has written to the Commissioner of Police, Leslie James, calling for an investigation into a statement made by Prime Minister Moses Nakamudu, which the party claimed is a clear attempt to incite racial tension among Guyanese. The People's Progressive Party Executive Secretary, Zulfi Mustafa issued a complaint to Commissioner of Police, Leslie James, and the Ethnics Relations Commission, against Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu over alleged proactive language used by him in a statement he released on Tuesday. Nagamutu, in his statement, claimed that the PPPC allegedly planned isolating and starving the people of Georgetown, the capital where Guyana's mainly Afro-Guyanese population lives. In the letter seen by this newscast, Mustafa stated that the complaint against the former Prime Minister is for inciting racial division by spreading inaccurate racial inflammatory statements. Mustafa said it is unhelpful for the process of national unity with statements like these and that Nagamutu's actions are in violation of the Racial Hostility Act and can have serious consequences for Guyanese. Luan Williams reporting for MTV News Update. Police ranks who are performing their duties on the 70k and police outpost on Tuesday, March 10, conducted a search of a vehicle during a routine stop and search exercise. It was then they discovered 235 grams of suspected cannabis in a vehicle. The illicit drugs were found hidden in a juice box. The driver and two other persons have been taken into police custody and are assisting with the investigation. Assistant Police Commissioner Edgar Thomas is speaking out for the first time since his sudden removal from Division 4A last Thursday as he was overseeing security measures during GCAM's verification of the election results of Region 4. I'm not disappointed because I believe in the God and God actually decides um, the way forward, my future. So I'm not disappointed. Okay. God will take control of everything. Assistant Police Commissioner Superintendent Edgar Thomas. Thomas, via telephone, related he remains optimistic regarding his future despite his recent removal as commander from Division 4A. Thomas, however, refused to say who directly made the order for the removal. Well, well, what I know the four stars of team, and that's all I can say, and you know that too. There's a structure. What I can tell you that I was not suspended, and what I can tell you, I'm, I'm no longer at um, Commander 4A. Well, I don't actually look in terms of what is justified or what is not justified. I don't look at that. Um, I believe in the God and God tells what justified and what is not justified. I wouldn't pronounce on that. That's the way I, I actually look. Thomas is presently stationed at the Ghana Police Force headquarters. He has not yet been appointed to any other specific division within the force. On Thursday, March 5, about 19 hours, at the GCOM Command Center, Hatfield Street, Deputy Chief Elections Officer Roxanne Myers indicated that she wanted everyone to vacate the building. It was revealed after failing to vacate the GCOM Command Center, four tactical services unit ranks approached both Thomas and Gunraj, where one of the ranks informed them he had orders to clear the building. The next day, Thomas was informed verbally of his removal from Division 4A because he refused an order to remove GCOM Commissioner Gunraj. Efforts to contact the Commissioner of Police, Leslie James, regarding the matter proved futile. Reporting from TV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Coming up after the break, regional and international news. Go round up and more. Stay with us. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing! I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. You can be a millionaire!
millionaire by only spending $100 on a daily million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the daily millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a daily millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Eighty percent of the population around the world have a stomachal problem because the water is contaminated. Some of these stomachal problems are diarrhea, cholera, typhoid, filaria. Avoid this sickness with the latest water purifier. Drink clean, fresh mineral water at all the time. Just put water from the pipe, the river or rainwater at the top of the water purifier and the system is going to remove all the impurities. Easy to use, easy to sample, no current, no batteries. Purify more than 10,000 liters of water. It happens. Your septic tank is full. All the waste from your toilet goes into your septic tank through the sewage line. When your tank is full, the two most common indicators are an overflowing tank and an overflowing toilet. It is recommended that Sivan's Waste Management empty your septic tank every two to three years to avoid any embarrassment. And before you can say, shh, it's gone. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Keeping with our reputation for providing quality products, services, and solutions, we're pleased to introduce to you our newest line of solar energy products by Victron Energy, provided by Farfan and Mendez Limited. At Decor and Gift Gallery, we have comfortable and unique living room suites. Check out your bonded leather sofa or three-piece recliner set and much more. Or pick a lovely dining room set to match your home setting. Whatever is your style, we've got it. Shop your living room or dining room sets at Decor and Gift Gallery today. Welcome back, now for some news from the region. One person has been killed and more than 40 injured in a collision between two trains and Mexico City's underground system. It is not clear yet what caused the collision, but footage shows one of the trains mounted on top of the other. The crash happened at 23.30 local time at Tacubayo Station in the west of the city. Mexico City's underground is one of the busiest worldwide with 1.6 billion passengers every year. It has 12 lines and 195 stations. Mexico City Mayor Claudia Chibon said 25 people had been taken to the hospital but that none of them had sustained serious injuries. Red Cross Mexico tweeted photos of the aftermath of the collision. An investigation into what caused the collision is underway. Chusa's accident is not the first deadly incident on Mexico City's underground system. In 1975, two underground trains collided, a vertical station killing 31 people. Internationally, the disgraced producer Harvey Weinstein has been sentenced to 23 years in prison for rape and sexual assault. Weinstein was found guilty in a trial in New York last month, finalizing a dramatic fall from grace for one of the Hollywood's most powerful figures. The 67-year-old appeared in court on Wednesday in a wheelchair. Weinstein's lawyer had appealed for leniency, insisting that even a minimum sentence of five years could be a life sentence for him. But prosecutors argue Weinstein should be given a maximum possible sentence given his lifetime of abuse towards women and lack of remorse for his actions. Weinstein addressed the court for the first time on Wednesday saying he had deep remorse but described himself as totally confused by what had happened in comments seen as critical to the Me Too movement. Dozens of women have come forward with allegations of sexual misconduct including rape against Weinstein since October 2017. He has consistently denied wrongdoing and these were the first charges to make it to trial. Weinstein was found guilty of committing a first-degree criminal sexual act against production assistant Marmon Haley in 2006 of the third-degree rape of former aspiring actress Jessica Mann in 2013. New York jurors acquitted him of the most serious offenses for predatory sexual assault which could have seen him given an even longer term. All six women who testified against him during his trial sat together on Wednesday as he was sentenced and told to register as a sex offender. 
Weinstein still faces Florida criminal charges for rape and sexual assault in Los Angeles. Dozens of women have come forward with allegations of sexual misconduct, including rape against Weinstein since October 2017. He has consistently denied wrongdoing and these were the first charges to make the trial. Weinstein still faces Florida criminal charges for rape and sexual assault in Los Angeles. His lawyers have vowed to appeal against his conviction. Now for MTV's Court Rangdo. A man was yesterday handed a life sentence for the killing of a police sergeant. 36-year-old Dennis Marks was found guilty of the charge which read that on March 1, 2016 at Matthews Ridge, he unlawfully killed Leonard LaRose. According to reports on the day in question, police ranks went to arrest Marks who was wanted in relation to an allegation of rape. However, while officers were trying to arrest him, Marks attacked the ranks with a knife, stabbing Sergeant LaRose to his neck and two other ranks to their chest and right hand respectively. He was subsequently shot to the right foot and arrested. Sergeant LaRose was pronounced dead on arrival at the Matthews Ridge Hospital. State Prosecutor Tuana Hardy asked the court to consider the prevalence of such offenses, where officers are attacked daily by persons. She also stressed that marks during his attack killed LaRose, as well as injured other officers. Justice Kisun, before passing sentencing, told marks that the court will not condone such actions against officers and will have zero tolerance to such acts. As such, the judge sentenced Mark to life imprisonment, and order that he spend the remaining of his natural life behind bars. Meanwhile, a pork knocker yesterday appeared before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan charged with murder. 26-year-old O'Neill Jeffrey was not required to plead to the indictable charge which stated that on February 29, 2020 at 111 Miles Madia, he murdered Roland Kanai. Reports indicate that on the day in question, Kanai was at the bar consuming alcohol when Jeffrey approached him and asked for money. The man refused and the accused reportedly picked him up from his chair and slammed his body to the ground. He then took some money out of the man's pocket and made good his escape. Kanai was picked up in an unconscious state and taken to the Madi Hospital, after which he was transferred to the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation, where he later died. The matter was reported and investigated, which led to the arrest of Jeffrey. The court heard that Kanai died as a result of a fractured skull. O'Neill Jeffrey was remanded to prison until March 23. In another matter... Four persons were today charged for the murder of a quarantine businessman whose body was discovered in a clump of bushes on a farm. Navinja Narayan Gopal Ram Gobin, Satram Kusle and Bailal McLennan were jointly charged when they appeared before Magistrate Alex Moore at the number 51 Magistrate's Court. The charge read that on February 27 at Port Morant, they murdered 49-year-old Lomenzo Johnny. However, Narayan and Ram Gobin faced a charge of accessory after the fact, which alleged that between February 27 and March 6 at Rose Hall Town, Knowing that McLennan and Kusley committed the offense of murder, they harbored the duel. Johnny, who resided at Lot 11 East Side Line Dam Rose Hall Tong Region 6 where Bees operated a grocery shop. His body was discovered by a construction worker. His keys were stolen and his home was ransacked with a safe containing a substantial amount of cash missing. However, diligent work by investigators from the Wim Police Station led to the arrest of the suspects and the subsequent discovery of the safe and about $2 million cash that was with one of the suspects. Further, the Guyana Police Force on Tuesday issued a wanted bulletin for Daniel McLennan, known as Dutty, for questioning in relation to the murder. McLennan is believed to be the mastermind behind the killing and robbery. The matter was adjourned until April 17 and transferred to the Albion Magistrates Court. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Celine Griffith. <music> Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., Guyana's sole distributor of NP and Ultra Lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice.
Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. The Ghana Motor Racing and Sports Club has confirmed the return of next Thursday, which was set to speed off this weekend, has been postponed. The event, which took a six-year hiatus from the club's calendar of activities, was set for this Saturday at the National Stadium Providence. However, the club announced, due to the current political situation in Guyana, it was best that the event be postponed until a later date. Dexterity's main event was slated to be a much-anticipated race challenge, which was expected to see the course divided into three classes, the 1500cc, 2000cc and Unlimited, competing for the fastest time. The challenge was made open to the public as a maximum skill test. Chelsea Lee, Report of MTV, Sports Update. The global spread of the coronavirus has claimed another international sporting fixture, with the Bangladesh Cricket Board postponing the World 11 and Asia 11 matches. These matches were scheduled to take place on March 21 and 22 in Dhaka and were set to include a variety of superstars including Virat Kohli, Lasif Malinga and Chris Gale, but the BCP President Nazmul Hassan announced on Wednesday that they have been deferred until further notice. The board has also postponed the A.R. Rahman concert at the Shiri Bangla National Stadium, which is also set to be part of the Sheikh Mahabur Rahman's birth centenary celebrations. The ongoing Bangladesh Zimbabwe T20 International Series is taking place at the Sri Bangla National Stadium amidst thicket restrictions due to concerns over the spread of the coronavirus. Britain John Shatter, the senior's category of the Amelia's Award in a circuit cycling race earlier this week after cruising through a 20 lap race. John finished ahead of 23 cyclists in the senior category. Curtis Chappie Day, Andre Padlock Green, Paul De Nobrega, Marcus Keeler and Marlon Fishy Williams in that order. Day bagged two of the five sprint prizes while De Nobrega, Green and John copped the other three. At the same time, in the 12-14 schoolboys two-lap race, Stephen Lalta finished in first place ahead of Orin Allen and Mark Lewis. Seasoned female cyclists Clive Sia Spencer and Savannah Hiles took the senior and junior categories respectively. Also, Suzanne Hamilton came out second in the senior category, while Malia De Santos took the second position in the junior category. Chelsea Lee, Report of MTV, Sports Update. Two members of the Haas Formula One team and one from McLaren are in self-isolation after being tested for coronavirus at the Australian Grand Prix in Melbourne. The personnel were tested in a medical center at the Albert Park circuit after showing symptoms of the virus and are staying in their hotel rooms as a precaution. McLaren informed they expect to receive the results overnight. The team is operating as per their normal schedule. The season opening Australian Grand Prix weekend is rescheduled to begin on Friday. The Australian Grand Prix Corporation has been informed and is monitoring the situation in conjunction with Formula One and the FIA. F1 said it has taken a scientific approach to the outbreak, adding that the health and safety of fans, family and wider communities is always paramount. Governing body the FIA has set up a crisis cell that meets every two days to analyze the coronavirus situation. Meanwhile, the Jabber F Formula race in Indonesia scheduled for June 6 has been postponed because of coronavirus. It's the third Formula E race to be cancelled this season after events in China and Italy. Kima Paul, Shimron Hethimai and Romario Shepard have been named in the Ghana Jaguar squad for their clash with Barbados in round 8 of the regional 4 day championship tomorrow. The Guyana Jaguars are second on the points table with 85.8 points, trailing behind Barbados Pride on 116 points. Head coach of the Jaguars, Yusun Crandon, informed this round's match is crucial and they are looking to flip the table in their favour. It's a very important match for us, um, like all the other games. Um, obviously, this top of the table clash, um, this probably is more crucial than the others um, in terms of Barbados. and. Um, you know, they had the upper hand against us in Barbados. Um, obviously, we're looking to turn the table around this time around here in Guyana. So, um, you know, they have a very good team on paper. And uh, we had a good team meeting to discuss their team and our plan against them. So, like I said before, it's just us going out and execute our plans well and to do the good things for extended period and um, to control the game from day one. Um, this is our conditions and we need to own the condition and play like, you know, we know this condition than any other team. Crandon added, having the West Indies trio is also crucial to the team. He highlighted, the three have a lot to offer and he hopes to see their best foot being put forward. The Guyana Jaguars will clash with Barbados Pride tomorrow at the National Stadium Providence from 10 hours. 
The updated team for the Round 8 clash reads Tejnar and Chanderpal, Shimran Hetmar, Vishal Singh, Leon Johnson, Christopher Barnwell, Raymond Reefer, Anthony Bramble, Kevin Sinclair, Gudakesh Moti, Akshaya Prasad, Diver Sami Permal, Romario Shepard and Kimu Paul. Chelsea Lee, Report of MTV, Sports Update. Manchester City's Premier League match with Arsenal earlier today was postponed as a precautionary measure. Several Gunners players are in self-isolation after Olympiacos owner Evangelos Marquinez contracted coronavirus. Marquinez also owns championship side Nottingham Forest yesterday said he had tested positive for COVID-19. Olympiacos will host Wolves in the Europa League on Thursday after UEFA rejected Wolves' request for the last 16 first leg match to be postponed. The Premier League says it has no plans to postpone any other matches and all necessary measures are being taken. Bridgeton say their home game against Arsenal on Saturday remains scheduled to go ahead as planned. It has impacted on the staging of sports events around the world with Italy's Serie A suspended and French and Spanish top flight games being played behind closed doors. European matches involving Manchester United, Rangers and Chelsea will be held between closed doors in Austria and Germany in the coming days, but this is the first match in the United Kingdom to be affected. The postponement means Premier League leaders Liverpool can no longer win their first title since 1990 this weekend. Ghana has lost its chance to qualify for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics after the cancellation of the 2020 America's Olympic Boxing Qualifiers by an International Olympic Committee. The qualifier, scheduled from March 26 to April 1 in Buenos Aires, Argentina, was cancelled in fear of the spread of the coronavirus. The GABA had named a five-member team with three coaches to represent Guyana at the tournament. Through the support of the Government of Guyana and the Guyana Olympic Association, Kevin Alicock, Desmond Amsterdam, Colin Lewis, Dennis Thomas and Tavina Kum were engaged in a three-month training stint in Cuba to prepare for the now-cancelled event. President of the GABA Steve Ninval confirmed the cancellation is a major setback but they understand the severity of the situation. Ninval added, a hefty sum of money was spent for tickets and insurance and those monies are non-refundable. However, in light of the cancellation, the GABA pledges to keep their boxers active. Chelsea Lee, Report of MTV, Sports Update. More news after the break. Get the right seal right now from Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., your immediate SKF sealing solutions. The SKF seal jet machine is capable of building seals from 5mm to 600mm in diameter in under 5 minutes. With technical support readily available, you can get a customized seal to suit virtually any industrial application, like buffer, rod, wiper, and piston seals. SKF seal jet machine, now at Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. And that has brought us to the end of Sports Update and now for the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 866. Let's turn our attention to the Demo Harbour Bridge and the Barbies River Bridge schedules. where we wrap up this evening's broadcast but before we go here's a reminder of our top stories high court nullifies elections declaration in region 4 orders returning officer to restart verification using statements of poll woman dies at gphc suspected of having the coronavirus covid 19. Carcom leaders arrive in ghana over disputed elections process and in sport ghana loses chance to compete in tokyo olympics after the cancellation of the americans olympic qualifier Qatar rebroadcasts at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Have a good night.